but not sure, not sure where to look. Oh, and I'm live. Good morning, everybody. Well, hold on one second. I don't know what I'm doing here. There we are. So I'm live. Am I live? Am I on? It sure looks like you are to me. <laughs> Am I looking in the right place? Am I looking at the right camera? I look as if I'm looking straight on. Or do I, I, when I look at myself here, hi everybody, I'm just muttering away. It looks like my eyes are doing that. But I know, I keep, looking that, the I keep looking that side. <laughs> but it's very weird to look where you're not looking. Anyway, good morning. Yes, it is Thursday morning. Oh my goodness, the sofa's empty. Uh, my friends have gone. I took them back to the airport yesterday. The house is empty. There's just me and the puppy once again. So, uh, all right, everyone, we're hoping to have a really, really great, great show this morning. And um, we were just talking uh, just a few minutes ago, Michelle and I, uh, about uh, fairness and life uh, not being fair. And she's got a situation with someone in her family, and I've got. I always have situations with my students when people say, but it's not fair. It's always not fair. And and my daughter, when she was about four or five, used to say the same thing. You hope that as people grow older that they realise that life isn't fair. Uh, and I would say to Samantha, when did I ever tell you that life was fair? So I brought her up to understand that life isn't always fair. Uh, unfortunate though it may be, there's no point whining and complaining about it. Life simply isn't fair and we just have to deal with situations as they come along. You know, when people complain that life isn't fair, my general attitude is, you know, I can sympathise because sometimes it's infuriating that life isn't fair. But then I usually say, if you want to know about life and the unfairness of life, go visit the children's hospital in your local area and you'll see how not fair life is. And uh, that's my take on it's not fair. Uh, so so uh, as harsh as I might sound, do I sound very, very harsh? I probably sound really harsh and really tough. And I am in many ways, I'm a very tough teacher. I try to teach my students that just because you think, you know, that it isn't fair doesn't mean it isn't right. Uh, and, uh, you know, sometimes there are reasons for life not being fair because through the unfairness of life, we often learn, we grow, we suffer, we, we go through our pains, our uncertainties, our insecurities, uh, and we grow. So often the unfairness of life means that we, you know, we stumble, we fall, but if we're lucky, we get up again. I can remember talking to uh, Grey Eagle, who is, by the way, here by my side. I remember talking to Grey Eagle once about life and fairness, and um, he said a very profound thing to me. And I wasn't actually talking about my life particularly. I was talking about the unfairness of a, of a particular situation that I was involved with, but a little bit on the periphery. And, uh, you know, I was saying that life, you know, is... Uh, can often be so unfair and people do suffer awful, awful tragedies. Uh, and, um, you know, he, uh, and then uh, he, and he, he looked at me and he said, but Rosemary, and this man is so wise and his words are so wise and he says it in such a gentle and loving way, but Rosemary, he said, if I were to smooth your path and leave no wrinkles, where would your learning process be? All right. Good morning, Michelle. The sofa is empty, but Michelle is sitting on the floor in front of me. Say Lovely. good morning to everybody, Michelle. Good morning. <laughs> and uh, I've had a pretty hectic week this week. I had a lot of fun. Uh, I don't know if you can tell the sun tan. I was on the beach all day uh, Tuesday. Yes, the nose always catches it. Uh, and... Um, it's true that I, coming off the beach, I did look like an owl, you know, I'm wearing my sunglasses because I was reading on the beach, I like to read, and, uh, you know, the big round sunglasses, and uh, of course you end up looking like an owl. I don't, do I look too much like an owl today? Um, too, too bad if I do. We not had a, really, it's more like a little bit of a scarecrow. You know how, like, the scarecrow has the nose painted? Yeah. 
<laughs> you see, I don't actually put powder and paint on my face. This is my skin as it comes uh, right out of the box when I was born. I, I, uh, the only thing I put on my skin is, is cream. Uh, unless, of course, I'm on TV, then you've got to put powder and paint on. But uh, anyway, this is me. So I, I should have put something on my nose. I'm looking at my nose on camera, but I'm not a vain person. I really don't care. We had such a lot of fun. And we hope that you had a lot of fun as well. If anybody out there has got any comments or questions, we are waiting with bated breath. And if you want to uh, talk about uh, life and unfairness, by all means bring it on because although my co-host Al <coughs> doesn't realize it yet we are going to have fairness or unfairness and what we should do about the unfairnesses in, in life and how what attitude we should take with it I think it would be a really good topic for our show tomorrow night in the meantime Miss Shell over to you my lovely all right, we have lots on this morning. Oh, everybody is happy. Good morning. Everything in the, in the chat room here. Good, good, good. Christian is on. Good morning, Christian. Chris, and he, Chris, Christian. 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 And he says, I have a question. What can, and I believe it's what can I do to start developing trans mediumship? Oh, uh, hmm. Well, Christian. I know why you would be intrigued by it. It's a very intriguing topic. And as a trans medium myself, uh, I actually required no training, weirdly. The training that I required was dealing with what was happening to me, not the actual doing of it. Uh, I would never, my darling, uh, teach anyone or encourage anyone. It is a very, very tough and a very difficult road to go down. Uh, it depends why you want to do it. Um, there are lots of reasons why people want to go into trance. Uh, and one of those, and the reason that I mostly, not always, but the reason I uh, did trance work was rescue work, to rescue those people who were struggling or had issues uh, going over to the other side. Uh, you can read more about that in The Eagle and the Rose. Um, so I would caution you actually against it. I would say that if you do have mediumistic uh, tendencies and uh, if you can do that to focus really on those and hone them and make those, um, make those gifts more powerful. Uh, if by doing this and if you come to a point in honing your gift, in honing your talent as a medium, if by doing this you reach a level uh, of consciousness which is, uh, you know, which is higher and more in tune, then I think trans work then will automatically come with that. But I'm, but to actually train someone to be a trans medium is a very foolish and a very foolhardy thing to do. That's just my opinion, of course. Uh, but having all these years of experience and being a trans medium myself, my advice to you would be focus on the gifts that you have and hone them and really build on them and work on your, raising your level of consciousness to the point that where you can see and feel and be. And this is what we try to do in my uh, online classes. We try from the very basics to raise, I try to teach my students to raise their level of consciousness to a point where they become, become so much more in tune with everything that is around them. And then if you are meant for trans work, Chris, Chris, Christian, Christian. Uh, then, uh, it, then it will happen once you have gotten yourself to that acute level of, of listening and connection. I do like the question though, thank you for that. Uh, and I would tell everybody out there, all of, all of you who are so eager to become more, uh, to do more, to, to learn more of this subject, I would caution you, it is not something you muck about with, it's not something you play with. And it can be in the wrong hands or in, in, um, in the hands of, let's say, a, a teacher who shouldn't really be teaching we know there are many of those about. 
you know, it's it's difficult, but I would caution anybody out there who is who is um, wanting to race too quickly to an end goal. Next question. Next one? Yes, keep going, Michelle. We've got okay. lots of people, so keep going. Sharon is on this morning. Sharon? Good mm -hmm. morning, Sharon. It says, we grieve our loved ones when they pass because we miss them so much. Do they grieve us? Very much so, I think. Um, the experiences that I've had talking with people who have passed, uh, they grieve for because they, they see us grieving and they know that they, you know, they, they have difficulty being able to play caters, to be able to reassure us that they're okay. Um, you know, this is why people come to somebody like me for a consultation, you know, because, because uh, their loved ones in the spirit world are able through someone like myself to be able to let you know, look, this is, we're okay, this is what we're doing, uh, and we know what you're doing too. Uh, so, of course, they, they do, they, they grieve for us, they get upset for us, sometimes they get annoyed with us because sometimes we're wallowing in it all, as we do as human beings, uh, and they get frustrated because they want us to get on with our lives and move on with our lives. So yes, just because, just because you pass into the spirit world doesn't mean that you lose all of those uh, emotions. So yes. Suzette is on. Morning, Suzette. And she says, how do we connect with our spirit guide? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Um, oh. Uh, right then, uh, Suzette, uh, my advice to you, and if you want to go back and take a look at, um, take a look at all of the previous videos, and you'll see some videos where I'm talking about spirit guides and the nonsense that is spoken about spirit guides, and that everybody wants one doesn't mean because you want one that you've got one. I do believe what you should be doing, my darling, is looking for your family, connecting with your family, connecting with your loved ones in the spirit world, because they are the ones who, for most of us, guide us and steer us. And I'll say this one more time, in case you're a bit puzzled by my answer, a spirit guide is a highly, highly evolved spiritual being. It's a bit like a first year nurse going to a New York hospital and wanting the head surgeon of the hospital, the head heart surgeon of the hospital, to be with her and walk around and introduce her to bedpans and all the rest of the stuff that you have to learn uh, before you can progress to the next stage. It is a nonsense to suppose that a highly evolved spiritual being would want to be with the majority of us and working with us especially when we're not in the business of working full-time as as i am and the reason i have a spirit guide is because i don't do anything else this is my life it's not just my job it's my life and so you know if you're looking for uh someone to help and to guide you look for your family because they truly are the angels who will help you Let's have another question. We actually had a question come in from an email. Okay. Which you and I have to talk about the email in a little bit. Yeah, all right. But <laughs> it's a gentleman whose son passed away very young, like eight years old, in a swimming pool because people weren't paying attention to him and he had released his child into these people's custody. So he wants to know... Will the people who neglected my child pay for their negligence in this life so that my son gets just, justice, not by the law of the country, but the law of the God? This is a very, uh, uh, this is very tough um, situation that you're in. Do we have the name of this person? Well, probably we don't. But His name is Harris, but he's, I don't believe he's on with us. Today. All right, well, Harris, if you get a chance to listen to this, and for all of you out there in similar situations or do or do have this burning question about uh, justice and blame and all the rest of it let me say first and this may seem to be extremely insensitive but it is certainly not meant to be uh, that um, we don't die unless it's our time uh, you hear of people who come back from the dead, you hear of them, they're dead for five minutes and then they, then they, you know, they take another breath. 
or the person who doesn't get on the plane that goes down uh, for whatever reason, swaps his seat with somebody else, so on and so forth. Um, there is a time to be born and there is a time to die and we cannot go before that time. So, my darling Harris, um, you know, as much as you are hurting and as much as I know that you you do want that justice and of course I can understand why you feel that your son is entitled to that. First of all, I'm sure that he's safe and that he's well and the last thing on his mind is wanting to make other people pay. Death is not a punishment. I think that's what we have to understand. Death is not a punishment. It is. Uh, it is a, a, a glorious continuance of our lives uh, and I think if we can understand that, if we can grasp that, then we can start to understand that, you know, that uh, he, it was his time. Unfortunately, I have to say this and I say this with the most loving heart towards you, it was his time to go. Uh, those people who had, had the negligence I don't know them, but my guess would be that uh, they are suffering for their negligence every single day of their lives, and that suffering, you know, will be terrible for them. Um, so I don't think that there's retribution required here, although I do understand why you would want it. Uh, but I, I don't believe that there are any accidents. I believe that he was in the right place at the right time and and I know that many people would say no he was in the wrong place at the wrong time but I do believe we cannot go before our time and that you know that is my opinion I would say my darling that if you want to do something for your son you reach out to him you smile for him you live your life every day uh, for him uh, making your life worth something be something that you know he would want you to be and be happy for him because I am absolutely sure that he is by your side uh, whenever whenever you need him to be but I'm also absolutely sure that he is living a full and a happy life let's have a next question shall we Michelle Deborah is on this morning morning Deborah and she says, how do I find out who my son is seeing and hearing in his room at night? And how do I improve my own psych psychic abilities as I know I do have some? Um, I think this is a question you should email me and tell me exactly what's going on and then maybe we can help you a little bit. Um, first of all, I don't know how old your son is. Second of all, I don't know what he's seeing and hearing. And third of all, I, I don't know you. So if you could just email us and give us a little bit more information, I might be able to help you a little bit better. Let's have another question. <coughs> Excuse me. Alongi, which I believe is Alina, if I'm uh, correct, I uh, believe okay. that that's her real name is Alina. All right, we're struggling with the name, so forgive us um, if we get it wrong. So Alina, she says, why am I not getting where I want to? Doing everything as right as I can. I understand life lessons and soul extension, but why is it so tough on me when others around me get everything when they're doing wrong? Well, actually, it's so easy to look at other people and think that, well, they're, you know, well, there's nothing wrong, they're all right. There's nothing wrong with their lives. They look fine. Nobody knows what goes on behind closed doors. Nobody can judge another. Nobody can judge another's life. You might see someone who's out there, you know, looking great, uh, put, holding their head up, you know, being, being all that they can be or seeming to be all that they can be. Uh, but that person may have tremendous heartache that you can't see, you don't know. So try not to judge uh, or compare yourself with other people because you don't know what other people are going through. They may look fine. You know, it reminds me, years and years ago, I worked at a pub. And uh, it was probably one of the worst times in my life. I mean, you know, I'd been abandoned, we had no money, I was struggling to feed my daughter, I could barely feed myself. I would stand over her, uh, you know, fish sticks and mashed potatoes. We used to get mashed potatoes because they were free from the guy across the street. Uh, and um, 
uh, uh, and I would drool and hope that she would leave some for me because I really did have trouble uh, being able to afford to feed us both and struggling. But when I went to the pub and I was working there, it was the most horrendous job with the most horrendous and lecherous landlord ever. His name was Bill, nasty, nasty man. And he, uh, um, he knows what he did and who he is. Um, anyway, uh, um, I walked into the pub. I put a smile on my face before I walked in there and that smile stayed on my face. I was friendly with everybody. I did my job. And I remember walking in one night and uh, there, there was this couple who always used to come in on a Wednesday night. They were lovely people. And I was a little bit early and they were there and they said, oh, come, Rosemary, come and sit and talk to us. So I went and sat down with them. How are you? And they said, you know, we've been talking about you, my husband and I. He said, she said, we've decided that you must be the happiest person we know because you always smile, you treat everyone the same, the women as well as the men. She said, don't think we've not noticed you treat the women with respect just as much as you give to the men and she said we just think we're, you're the happiest per person in the world and I and I smiled and I said well thank you and I'm thinking to myself boy I must be the best actress in the world because I went home that afternoon and I didn't even take off my coat I sat on the stairs and I just was crying and crying and crying because sometimes that smile would stick st it would stay on my face and I would have such a hard time getting it off even when I was at home by myself do not judge a book by its cover, please. My darling, do not assume that everybody is fine just because they look like they are. Get on with your own life. Start focusing on you. I think, honestly, if you stop moaning and complaining about that everybody else is doing all right and it's not fair that you're not because that's where we're down to here, right? We're talking about fairness. There's another comment that she put on for Okay, this. but I, I do I do get it. I do get where, just, trust me, I've been right where you are. Why is everybody else happy and I'm not? I mean, I get that to, totally and I can do that just as much as everybody else. However, focus on you, my love. Focus on what you're doing and, and, and things will start to come around. I promise they will. And what was the second comment she made? She said, I love this guy and all was beautiful until my married aunt got involved. <sighs> she First she stopped him and now is involved with him, even uh -huh. married. I can't say anything to anyone and only hope that he comes back to me. Oh, why would you want him? Now you can just stop that. You stop that. Why would you want someone who gets involved with something like this? He's a sleazy, miserable human being. What is the matter with you? You're much better than that. You can do better than that. You can certainly do better than him. I know you don't want to hear it, but get a grip is what I would say to my daughter. Get a grip, my darling. Get on with your life. Move away. Move away from your aunt and the toxic, toxic, toxic and to toxicity that is around you. And as long as you're involved in that and holding on to that, of course you won't. Of course you won't move forward. Of course you won't. You're better than that. Why would you want him or her? Let's move on. I've got the shudders here. Right. Oh, if you were in front of me now, I would shake you. Then I would hug you and then I would shake you again. All right. Let's go to the next question before I get really worked up about it. <laughs> We have Sunshine Moon on with Good us Good morning, today. Sunshine Moon. She, she wants to know, did you ever watch a TV show that had a mystery? Folks that were trying to solve a mystery, you know, for example, and you knew the answer or asked the answer from Great Eagle. Listen to me. <laughs> Let me just tell you, my daughter hates watching movies with me because I always know the end before, almost before the movie started. Sometimes I hate watching a movie or a TV series because I think oh and this is going to happen and friends who watch with me they'll just look at me sometimes I might turn my head to say as if I'm going to say something to them don't tell me don't tell us I, so yeah I'm afraid I'm afflicted with that <laughs> let's have the next question Alina said yes and that she loves us for remembering her name Oh, well, good. Get on with your life now. Move forward. Stop being a silly girl. 
Go for it. Next one. Next Twiggy question. Leaf is on with us this morning. morning so Twiggy is Dean. Leaf. Good morning, Dean. <laughs> we are not. We don't have any questions right now. Oh, but come on. Get we do need it, everybody. To... Otherwise, I'm going to quit. Because no. we can leave early today, right? We can. We also questions. need to touch base that we're having our healing session this afternoon because of... Kay and her girls flying out yesterday at messed yes, up our usually schedule. Usually we do we've started doing the healing sessions for those of you who don't know or are not, not sure what it's about. But I do live healing sessions now. Um and uh, we usually have had them on a Wednesday, but I took my friends to the airport yesterday and I was driving at the at the time we would normally have had the healing session I was driving back in the slashing driving rain and black clouds and so on and so forth which were quite appropriate you know when you when you see your friends going off you don't see them very often uh, at all and you you know it's been two years since I've seen them and the before that it was eight years since I've seen them so so you know so it's, it's hard so of course I was crying in the rain yes not really I was I'm just I'm kidding I'm slight exaggeration there but anyway um so we're going to have our healing session. I forgot why I was rambling. So it's, I, am I am tired, I have to say. I'm a bit exhausted, so forgive me if I'm rambling today. Um, it is a live show after all. Uh, if I am awake this afternoon, <laughs> we're going to have our healing session. Of course, when we begin the healing session, and I talked to you about healing, I'm going to be trying to help you to visualize for yourselves how you can give healing to yourself and maybe even how you can give healing to other people. And if you want to join with us, what time are we doing that this afternoon? 1.30. 1.30 this afternoon. So, you know, join with us then. If I go to sleep halfway through, I'm sure that uh, that Michelle will say, and that's it for now, folks. No, you do, <laughs> I very well might. You do actually, you will have a chance to make comments. Uh, if you need healing or if you have a particular uh, um, situation or a, si a particular health problem and you would like to mention it to us, we can certainly send out a specific healing to you for that one reason. Uh, so you know so you can email us you can make comments uh, if you would like to be a healer yourself uh, as I tell all of my students first and foremost you must learn to give healing to your own self before you're able to give healing to other people so so just you know just remember and um, you know and it's a, a very very nice very easy thing to do and all you all have to do is sit back and relax and let me do all the work and send out all the energy so uh do we have more questions i we see do. them popping up and we just do, to give do. you all a heads up out there you have to work with me this is not just me talking to you come on get you have to you know think of some questions or enjoy yourselves here in this show how often do you get a chance to ask someone like me a question and here every here thursday, we are. Every thursday. <laughs> Oh, Michelle, you are so, so nice. Anyway, go ahead. Yes, let's have our, our next question. We actually have several questions that came through, but before we get into those, yes, we need to talk about um, that we're going to start doing online conferences. I'm hoping, I'm hoping the mailing list the, what, and the contest. Let's do this month. Oh, all right. <laughs> yes, all right, we'll do that then. So, first of all, if you want to be on my mailing list, which you really should be because all sorts of things are going to be happening in the future, you must request it. We do not automatically put people on the mailing list. We simply, I just simply don't like to do that. I don't like to receive emails from people I don't particularly know and I'm forever deleting email after email after email without even going in and looking at it and I'm sorry I know it might, might be a mean thing to do but sometimes you're inundated with emails so if you want to be on our mailing list please you must email us rosemary at rosemarialtea.com and in your subject line put email and just simply request please put me on the mailing list and then you will be on the mailing list and we've had so many requests for that it's mm -hmm. been amazing really because I didn't realize I think I just presume I think people presume should I say that if they email you then you're automatically going to be on our emailing list and that does not work for us so if you want to be on the mailing list 
email me rosemary at rosemaryaltair.com and we shall put you on the mailing list. Now, we do have a competition going and we've had quite a few entries. I'm the judge, unfortunately. I'm not <laughs> going to get in a panel of judges, it's me. This uh, competition has uh, to do with um, superstitions. superstitions and old wives' tales, I suppose, which are often the same thing. And um, uh, so if you have, if you know an old wives' tale or a superstition, and you want to join in this competition, the prize will be uh, a, a full CD uh, of the Eagle and the Rose, which will be my dulcet tones because I read the book and also the newest uh, book A Walk in the Clouds and um, you unfortunately uh, although if you are in any other part of the world and you want to send us in the superstitions we would love to hear them but you do not qualify for a prize because as we found out in the past uh, if you are within the United States uh, then you're eligible but every time we send something out to somebody who who wins something or we send out a prize we get tangled up with the inland revenue we get tangled up with taxes so we decided so please even if you're not eligible to win we still would love to hear from you so if you want to join in that competition and you've got a couple more weeks to go right October 24th everything has October to be in by October 24th is the final final so send them in now and um and i'm dying i that some of the superstitions are really fun so please uh send them in you can send in as many as you like don't think you can only have one go you can send in i don't care a ton if you want to and uh just in your email in the subject line put uh, competition and then we know exactly which uh, uh, which um, folder you go into and then I shall be able to read all of them and, and make a judgment and there are three of you who will win the prize. So get going, get going, get going uh, and we shall be announcing the winner on Halloween, Halloween which is, happens to be a Thursday morning. Uh, if you're really fortunate, I could wear a witch's hat or something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want. Don't think I have one actually. I have one. Do you? Anyway, we might dress up for it a little bit if I'm forced to do it, and um, <laughs> uh, we shall announce the winners then. So get going, get going, get going. Send in as many as you like. You can be a winner, and uh, uh, you know. So, uh, and I shall. I should be the judge uh, and there's one last thing yes also we are going to be doing some online conferences I think for our next competition that we should give um, a pass for one of the online conferences so they wouldn't have to you mean a ticket to an online mm -hmm. conference for the next contest for the next contest yeah because we don't have the conferences lined up we right don't now, have so the, I don't think that's we fair. don't have the conferences lined up yet but um, yeah, that would be, yeah, we could do that. We could even give even more than one or two away, couldn't we? Uh, anyway, we're going to be doing online conferences. And um, if you want to know more about those, of course, you will want to be on my emailing list, won't you? So we're back to the email list again. If you want to know more about the conferences, please, uh, and if or if you have a suggestion for a conference, because the conferences are going to range from healing to talking with the dead, to communicating uh, with our own souls, to developing our own abilities, to uh, learning to spot our aura and to aura spot. The, co the conferences are going to be everything to do with this subject. So if you are interested or you have an idea or you'd like to know more about a particular topic in, within this area, because we all know that this is a many faceted subject, so you know just write to us again email us i want to be on the me mailing list uh and um i want to know about the conferences and i've got the great idea for a conference could you do this so feel free to email us about whatever you want rosemary at rosemaryaltair.com and is that it have we done all the notifications now i think i we, believe yes i think we have uh so um questions okay twiggy is on and she says has the government or CIA ever approached you to use your psychic abilities to help them?
it's top secret. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Twiggy, but it is actually top secret. I can't answer that question with a yes or a no. Make of it what you like. But what a great question. But I have been approached by law enforcement offices in the past. Uh, as I have been approached by royalty, as I have been approached by government people, not just in the States, but in other countries as well, so, but it's all top secret. Plus, when somebody asks me for help, it's, a, it's personal and private, so I never, unless it's with their specific permission, I would never discuss it anyway. Are you ready for good the next question, one? Good question, though, yes. Okay, I'm going to mess up this username, but we don't have an actual name. Okay, so the username is W-A-E-R-U-O. W-A-E-R-U-O. Okay, Waro or something like that, right? So it's we, don't know, we don't know your name. We do wish we'd know your name. I do like to call people by their names, Real but names. never mind. Uh, let's have the question, shall Since we? Rosemary, are you able to know when I'm going to die, or are there too many paths that can take place? Uh, well, I think we already discussed this earlier. <coughs> with Harris and his son, the situation there. Uh, I believe that for all of us, there is a time for us to be born and there's a time for us to die. So if it would do you any good to know, or if it would benefit a person to not just particularly you, but anyone, if it would benefit a person to know, certainly if you came to see someone like me, we could discuss it. However, it's rare because it's, rarely benefits anyone to 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 know this thing because we we all should live as if it's our last day on earth anyway shouldn't we of course we don't but we should um what was the second part of that question it wants to know if there's too many paths that can take place to right so uh, that's a that's a, it's a really actually a really good question because Although there is a time to be born and a time to die, there are also, we do have choices between that being born and between that dying. We do have choices, lots of choices. Some things in our lives are inevitable. It's inevitable, for instance, that we meet a person. It's inevitable that we move to a certain house. Though often those inevitables are come from the choices that we've already made. Uh, so there are many choices that we can take uh, but there are some inevitables that we cannot change, that some situations that we are meant to face through our lives. And um, so, you know, so different choices, different paths, and we have to just try if we can with a positive attitude to, to make our positive choices. So even so, no matter what those choices will be, uh, that time that you are meant to go home, as we say, uh, is uh, set in stone a little bit, and so you know, not really, not really changeable. Let's have our next question. Um, Sunshine has another question. Okay, and she says, "Do you take classes with your peers, folks that are as talented as you?" I don't know what to say to that. So, uh, well, Grey Eagle is far more talented than I, so and he is my teacher. <coughs> so I take classes with him. He guides me, he steers me, and even as I'm talking to him, he has his hand on my shoulder. So I think I answered it. I think I answered correctly there. Uh, um, I've never actually, it is true to say, I've never actually met uh, anyone like me, uh, which makes me the, probably the one of the weirdest people on the planet. Uh, I've never actually met anyone who has the same gift as I. That doesn't mean that there aren't gifted people, and I'm not saying I'm more gifted than anybody else. I'm simply saying that my gift perhaps comes in a different form, in a different way. Uh, so um, it would be hard for me to to, to have a, a a class with my 
peers because I'm not, I've not actually met anyone who I could relate to in the same way. So I guess the answer is no. Having said that, Gregel is my teacher and the best, as far as I'm concerned, the best there is. And uh, so uh, I, I have classes with him and with others in the spirit world. So uh, that'll do, that's fine. Right, let's have a next question. Good, good, that was a very good question though. We very actually have a, a one quick comment I'm gonna throw in because it relates to one of our recent questions. Comments, go yes. for it, we love comments. The screen name of W-A-E-R-U-O, Waru, is, her name is Tessa. Hi, Tessa. And she said, she just wanted to know if you could tell, but not necessarily want to know the answer. Like, she doesn't want to know when she's going to, no, I realize, she just no, wanted to I know realize if you that. could she's tell. A, she's asking generally, not specifically. Yes. Um, yeah, thank you for that, Tessa, and thank you for giving us your name. Um, uh, it yes, it is. It's possible, as I said. It's possible. It's possible to know these things, uh, but uh, I try really hard when I'm when I'm doing my consultations. Um, you know, when you come to see someone like myself for a consultation, you don't always get what you want, but you always always get what you need always. And um, and the curiosity is that depending on how you give a person information uh, depends on how they're able to take it and to accept it. I, I will tell you this little story. Uh, years and many, many years ago, a lady came to see me. She was probably in her mid to late 60s. Such a lovely person. She had gorgeous sons and she was, but uh, she, was living in a great deal of pain. Uh, she'd had a, a, a lousy life, uh, one way or another, except for her sons who were her pride and joy. Um, and uh, she'd been abandoned by her husband of a, of a lot of years of marriage. And as I was talking to her, um, I could see her future so clearly, so brightly, so clearly, so beautifully. And so I said to her, you know, I, I really feel, uh, because this is what Gregel had told me, this is what I was able to see, I really feel that, you know, within the next year, the sun is going to shine for you. And it, it, your life is going to change completely. It's going to be absolutely glorious and beautiful. And you will love it. Uh, and you will find the peace that you've so longed for in your life. And so, I said, you know, a few more things, but anyway, she went home and she told her son and she lived for the next year in a state of absolute joy and bliss because she felt at peace and she felt, wow, you know, something really, really good is coming. Anyway, uh, a little while later, her son actually called me and asked to come and see me and he sat with me and he said, you know, I just want to thank you, Rosemary. He said, my mother died about a year after she came to see you. And I smiled and I said, I said, you know, how did she die? He said, she just died in her sleep. But everything you told, he said, I believe because I believe that she's now in the light. I believe that she's at peace and her life has completely changed, hasn't it? And uh, he was so thrilled because I'd been able to give her the hope and joy for the future. So if you go to see someone who says they're like me or they, you know, they can see the future and so on. And they terrify you and they frighten you. You need to walk out and don't pay a penny because they are lying and they are just uh, those awful people who like the drama of being able to tell somebody something. They like the drama of being able to influence people. But a, a real medium, a good medium will never tell you anything that is hurtful to you or harmful to you in any way, shape or form. So please be aware of that. Let's have another question. Do we have another question? Yes, we still have lots of questions. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Sharon would like to know. Yeah. Maybe I asked this. I don't think I did though. There are so many paranormal TV shows on these days. Have you been approached by any of them? And if you were, would you participate? Um, 
I have been approached by TV shows. I have been approached <coughs> by some really weird uh, TV shows, as you can imagine. Um, I certainly would be prepared to do something, but here's the difficulty. I, I like to work on my own. Because when you work with other people, you're actually saying that, you, if you stand on a stage with someone else, you're actually saying that this person I'm standing on the stage with is bona fide. But if I don't know you and I've never worked with you before, how do I know that you're bona fide? So I prefer to work by myself. But if anybody out there has got an idea for a TV show, bring it on, baby. Because I would love to do it. We'd love to do it. Ghost hunting, going into haunted houses. I know people do it all the time. Um, and uh, we did think about doing that at, at one point and making our own shows and maybe um, we could do that. Maybe be a yeah, lot of fun. Michelle's eyebrows are raised up into her head now. We could maybe do that. Uh, maybe put out some videos even of the experiences that we're having. Uh, but I have been on many TV shows and talked about the paranormal. But actually going out and and doing the ghost hunting or going to see people who are uh, beset with the, let's say a ghost. Uh, bring it on. I'd love to do it. That would be fun. But not unfortunately. Uh, as uh, you know with with uh, with anyone else because I don't I can only trust my own self and I can only trust my pacer pardon I said you could start with my pacer that goes across my back one arm okay yeah Michelle did have a <laughs> sighting the other day and in fact got it on camera we can tell we can talk about that another time let's have another question shall we the next one is from Lisa morning Lisa and she says hello Rosemary we Hi, met darling. in Phoenix Arizona back in the 90s I wanted to ask you a follow-up question from back then. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. Well, what did I tell you? <laughs> she says, you mentioned that I needed to heal myself first. Yes. And then the next... That sounds like me. I've got to scroll down a little bit more because it's broken up in a couple different comments. Okay. Um, my question is, what happened to me specifically on both September 11th of 2019 and September 15th of 2019? That's it? Yeah. <laughs> you got to give us more than that, my love. Um, I had chatted back in there for her to email the office and we'll try and yeah. help her. Yeah, that works. That works. Um, if no. you've had experience with me before, even though it's way back, then hopefully you know that I, I might know a little bit more about what I'm doing. So if you want to email me and give me a bit more, certainly I'll see if I can help you. Yes. It's rosemary at rosemaryaltea.com. Thank you. It's rosemary at rosemaryaltea.com. Yes, there you are. Sorry, I'm not doing my job properly, am I? I'm being, <laughs> I'm being chastised. We did, uh, before the show, I said to Michelle, we might need a a, a, a word, you know, a, a, what is it called? A code a, word. A, a code word. Uh, if I'm falling asleep or from, if I'm slacking, give me the code word. But we never actually came up with one, did we? We haven't needed it. <laughs> Okay, Let, let's go to the next question, shall we? Um, Alina says, I hope you don't quit. I look forward to connecting. I'm not to going connect to quit. With you Why always. on earth would you think I would That quit way I can bombard you, bombard you with more questions and guidance. Oh, go ahead. Knock yourself out. Um, we'll do what we can to answer any questions. And if we don't get to them this week, you can always come back next week and ask, ask them again. We do our very best, don't we? Suzette says, I'm new to this. Where can we join your healing course? Um, if you email us, <laughs> again, if you email me and you want to know more about uh, classes, uh, then you need to email me rosemary at rosemaryaltea.com and in the subject line put classes and I will send, we will send that email on to uh, my co-host for the Everything is Attitude show, which is always on a, a Friday, so that's tomorrow at probably around four in the at Eastern Standard Time. And um, uh, uh, because he deals with all of the uh, the enrollment stuff and so on and so forth, so and we are talking possibly about starting another class uh, sometime towards After the first of the year. I thought and I'm not sure when, but anyway, we're thinking about it. So if you want to know more about it, you want to know more about my classes, or you want to know more about the conferences, or 
If you just simply want to know more about me, email me rosemary at rosemaryaltea.com. You can also, while I think about it, find me on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. YouTube and YouTube and you can go to YouTube and you can see more of these because we always we leave them up so if you go into my channel at YouTube you can you can spend hours and hours you could have a whole weekend watching me on TV couldn't they I mean we've got so many shows yeah uh, anyway, and then remember that our if healing you would session, like to do that the healing session today is on your Facebook healing page yes and the healing session today as all the healing sessions are are on my Facebook page on my healing Facebook page if you want to know how do they get the link to that how would they get the link to that I can post the link to the page so that they have it right here in the comments can you do that I can all right so we'll post it to the page whatever that might mean you do realize don't you that I don't know what it means but anyway Michelle does and as long as one of us does that's all that matters do we have any other questions or comments Michelle Naomi says sorry Hi, Naomi oh she had sent a wonderful she said she wanted to say that it was wonderful that the healing session is today because she does not have class of class and will finally get to join it live hey good good good, good. Um, Deborah asked to be added to the healing for her lower back pain I've already added her to the Morning, page Deborah we've already added you so that was fast wasn't it I keep seeing things popping up Michelle keep going That's, we're going we're going Dean wants you to know wants you to do another video where you're making chocolate goodies. And oh I said, well, Christmas is coming. I Christmas said that's a great is, idea. Christmas is coming, so uh, you know uh, we should have made what we should have done. I never thought about it, Dean, till you mentioned it. But having the girls here, we've been cooking up, up a storm, and I was teaching them to make the mushroom risotto. I have to say, oh, it was to die for it was so so good now risotto is they say risotto is always best served straight out of the pan when it's first made and we did we did put a huge dent in it I took some across to my neighbor and uh, and there was a little bit left and as Kay uh, doesn't eat uh, beef or didn't want what we were having, she had the rest of the risotto and I had a forkful of it. And I have to say, even the next day, being in the refrigerator and then heated in the microwave, it was still, it was, oh, it's so, so good. But there is a video of that in on the cooking channel. So you can actually get to see that, that's already done. But I, I agree with you, Dean. Why don't we, thinking of Christmas. We could do it with Gwenny. Well, you know, oh, you can bring, to cook yeah, with yeah. You. you can, uh, we'll have Michelle's daughter come. Michelle, you can take the video and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and Gwen and I can make some chocolate stuff and, uh, and some, and some goodies. We can maybe make some marzipan as well and make some marzipan figures and do all of that. That would be fun, wouldn't it? To have it a, a fun, Christmas, yeah. Christmas thing. We can make some little fairy cakes. We can do a lot of. We we'll let give. Leave it with me, Dean. Leave it with me. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Let's have another question. Do we have another question or another comment? We still have lots going on. Um, Annette says, "Hi, Rosemary. Watching you from live from Australia. It's 1:45 a.m. What What are you doing? Still awake? Good morning, my darling. Uh, I'm Her, glad you were able to join with us. Her question is." Did her dad find her mom? She said she know he was a he. She knows he was a bit lost. So, um, as you are up at this time in the morning, and as you are from Australia, I'm going to do really nicely. I'm asking Gregor, and I can't do it without him. And if he says so, I have to do it anyway. And he did say so. He's got his hand on my shoulder. So here is your answer, my darling. Um. So apparently, and I hope. You understand this? Please let us know if you don't. If I've confused you, just just let me know. But according to Gregor, he was actually you. You actually mentioned that he was uh, lost, but he was very confused because uh, it was like uh, they were like two halves of a complete whole. And uh, so you know, when one of you goes, I don't know if you've ever seen that uh, wonderful movie stuck on you. Uh, it's a fabulous, funny, funny, funny movie. 
with Matt Damon and uh, Greg Kinnear. If you want a good laugh, it's the stupidest, most ridiculous movie ever. Shares in it, uh, and uh, Meryl Streep's in it, and uh, go, go for it. Have a good laugh at it. But the point is that these two brothers are stuck together, and they finally, you know, get separated. But they can't manage without each other. And this is I'm sort of describing your parents here. Uh, and so that I feel that he was completely lost. However, this is a message from Greg or for you specifically, so you understand. Uh, she was waiting for him. So it wasn't a question of did he find her. She was waiting for him. Hers was the hand that reached out and drew him across the bridge. So I hope that makes you feel better. I hope it was worth waiting up for. And now go to sleep. Be at peace. They send their love to you. Let's have another question, shall we? Randy is on today. Good morning, Randy. And she, he says, my friend's grandfather died two years ago. Yep. And he was a father figure to me. When he died, I felt I was in close contact with him. Is it possible for you to ask, that, ask him if there's anything he wants to say? I can ask through Grey Eagle. Uh, and surprisingly, I uh, didn't expect this, but surprisingly, and I'm not saying that this is this person, Randy, but I do see a gentleman standing in front of me out of the corner of my eye here, but this is, this is to be clear, this is from Grey Eagle, he's waving at me, so okay, I've got your attention, I can see you, so Randy, this is for you. Um, Apparently, Randy, you have had some struggles, while well, we all have. Uh, you've had some struggles and you found it difficult to sort of, get, sort of find your feet and to be truly at peace within you. So this is uh, this man's request to you, your surrogate father, as I call myself to Kay's girls. I'm the surrogate mother. Uh, so um, he wants you to live your life every day as if it's the last, live it to the full as much as you can and do find the peace within you. That's, he's very specifically now saying, that is what he would like you to do for him. And if you could tell his kids the same, uh, then that would be wonderful. Let's have the next question. <coughs> Kitty wants to know. Morning Kitty. If can a person have a torn or a messy aura? <laughs> that's a question for tonight, Kitty. Don't you think that's a question for tonight? Uh, a torn aura or a messy aura? I will, I will answer this question, but you can, we could go more into it if you'd like to tonight in class. Naughty Kitty. Uh, anyway, <laughs> just trying to get a question beforehand. Um, certainly. Uh, a person's energy can be messy. A person's energy can be all over the place. Uh, a person's energy can be, you know, can be, if you're messed up, your energy is going to be messed up. If your heart is breaking, your it will show in your aura. So there are lots of things uh, that you, you will see in your aura that reflect your own condition. It's not about your aura and what can my aura be. It's about your aura, remember your aura is a reflection of you. you, the energy that is within you, that is your aura, that is, so what you're seeing is uh, you as a mess, you as a torn perhaps, uh, and it will reflect in the aura, yes, and we will discuss it more later if you'd like to. Let's have another question. The next one is Ruth Ann. Ruth Ann, good yes. morning Ruth Ann. She said, so heaven is three, three feet above our ground. We have all been told to look up for heaven. Um, uh, no. Uh, well, first of all, let's, let me say everyone's idea of heaven is different. Um, you can say that heaven is that place that runs parallel with us. Uh, you can say that heaven is above us. 
when we talk about developing our sense and our sensitivity, certainly we're talking about raising our level of consciousness, which means literally lifting our own sensitivity, raising it to the point where we're able to see and to reach out. It's not a question of necessarily reaching above, it's a, it's a question of reaching out. But yes, there is this, you know, this idea that God, you know, God is up there somewhere in heaven, uh, because, you know, we relate to that because we're human beings and what do we know? But don't necessarily take it too literally, my love. Next question. Sharon says, I would love to I would love to see more cooking videos from you. <laughs> I have to figure out how to make my own so I can share my recipes with my grandkids. Right. Well, I'm about to make the Christmas cake anytime now because you have to make it at least six to eight weeks before Christmas. And I know it's horrifying, but it's not that far now till Christmas. Uh, I know, I know. So, but there is a video of me making the Christmas cake and there's a video which I actually watched with the girls and Kay yesterday uh, of me icing uh the, the decorating the Christmas cake with my darling boy uh, and it's it's very funny and it's very very cute because he just what you don't see on the video is that he just gets everything that I've got and he sticks it all over the cake uh, and we have a lot of fun with that so that's something you can do with your children or with your grandchildren whether you like fruit cake Christmas cake or whether you whether you just want to make a cake you can still ice it in the same way that I made I ice my Christmas cake and I make my own uh, marzipan, which I adore. I love marzipan. Anyway, so um, was there a question? Uh, I can't remember. I'm glad you love the videos. We're going to do more of them, absolutely. And uh, hey, why don't we do this? If you out there have an idea of what you would like me to cook. We can set up a poll on Instagram. <laughs> Well, of different things and oh they can choose golly. one and yeah, we'll see what are. wins uh, i can do we can do candied nuts we can do nuts covered in sort of like a weird meringue thing that crisp up beautifully we we do we can do chocolate covered cherries we can oh golly oh, and, and, and michelle is saying let's do a poll on instagram we could do that why don't you email me and if you've got any suggestions or any wants and if I don't do it or I can't do it, I can either learn, we can learn together. Uh, we'll find a recipe somewhere or, you know, whatever, and we'll do it together on video uh, or we can, um, you know, whatever or else, but email me, rosemaryatrosemaryatrosemaryatrosemaryatrosemaryatrosemaryatrosemaryatrosemaryatrosemaryatrosemaryatrosemaryatrosemaryatrosemaryatrosemaryatrosemaryatrosemaryatrosema
<laughs> so, I think we need to link the two together. Uh, yeah, we'll work on that. But in the meantime, if you go to Rosemary Altair in the kitchen, and I know that I put in Rosemary decorating the Christmas cake and that came up, so I found it on YouTube. So you can find it that way if you like. And if you have a struggle or you're struggling or you, you want to know more about it or you'd like the link, this email, email again email me rosemary at rosemaryaltea.com and if you want to be on the emailing list please request that we put you on um, tessa says everyone seems so lovely we are we're all lovely sharon and said cooking night sharing recipes yes um Pink and purple hearts says, do you see my friend Desiree's brother around her? Does he have any messages for Not, her? You're a bit late asking. Try again another week. Uh, but remember, okay, so we're unfortunately winding up. Uh, if you have a question and you didn't get it answered this week, get in early next week. Uh, because we do take them as they come in. So... Uh, and we're only here for an hour. We're all we're already past the time, and we have to quit because we do have to have lunch. Uh, Michelle does have to get this uploaded or downloaded or whatever that is, and put it up on the on YouTube so people who are not live can watch it. Remember, you can go to YouTube and see all of the rest of our videos if you'd like to. If you go into Rosemary Altea's kitchen, if you put it into YouTube, you should be able to get it up. If you struggle, again, email us rosemary at rosemaryaltea.com. And please remember, in about, what is it, an hour and a half or something? Uh, a bit less than... 1.30. A bit less than an hour and a half. After we've had lunch, because we're hungry, we're going to be doing a healing session. It will be live. You can, we'll be looking forward to your comments. If anybody wants to be on the healing list, it's free you don't we don't charge for healing at all if you want a consultation again email us and put in the in the you know the subject line consultation please and we'll send you all the details for that so until we get back together again until i see you again please 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 all of you thank you very much for joining and thank you to gray eagle thank you to michelle uh and uh, thank you to all of you watching and somebody said you all seem nice I do so appreciate all of you. If you want to join the competition, you do have to subscribe. Even if you don't want to join the competition, we'd love it if you subscribe, 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 because the more people who subscribe, the more we can do and the more we can put out there on, on YouTube for all of you. So please, please, please subscribe, subscribe, share, share, share. Don't forget to share. And um, email us if you want to know more. And, and Till then, uh, my students, I will see you tonight. Uh, and see him in, on the healing session. One class. We will see you in about an hour and a half. If you well, less than an hour and a half now. If you want to join us for our live healing session, it will be at uh, one thirty Eastern Standard Time. That's New York time, um, and uh, you can find that as on the healing book Facebook the Facebook Rosemary's healing book Rosemary's healing book on Facebook there you are Rosemary's healing book I posted the link on too. Facebook Michelle has posted the link so you can just click on the link and that will get you there and you can ask questions you can make comments and so on and so forth we're on there for an hour and uh, that that will be fun so you can see me later on today if you'd like and um, tomorrow uh, at four o'clock Eastern Standard Time I think unless it changes because I'm not that she's spoken to our recently, but I think it's then. Uh, you will find us, uh, everything is attitude with my co-host, Al Pisano. So watch this space, subscribe, subscribe, email. And if you want to be on the email list, let us know. And we'll let you know more and more and more about what is happening. And until I see you again, please, please, please have a very, very, very blessed rest of the day. And popcorn. I'm looking at the X. Popcorn, there there it is. I've got sorry about my hand there, that's it. Okay.